Hi, my name is Ethan Mates. I'm a recording engineer, mixer, and producer based in Los Angeles. I've been Lincoln Park's chief engineer for the past 15 years. In addition, I've done projects with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Black Eyed Peas, Korn, Tupac, and a number of other artists, and as well as producing original music for TV, film, ads, things like that. One thing that we learned very quickly when we were doing the music for TV is that you absolutely cannot have, nobody is going to pay for any kind of sampling with uh, something for TV. So very quickly we realized that we would have to create our own samples and make things sound like samples and records and things like that so that we could get the textures that we wanted without actually having to pay royalties for samples. It's not even one necessarily specific genre. You can just make stuff that sounds kind of old and cool and funky. And maybe it has elements of prog rock and gospel and funk and whatever. There's sort of no rules for it. The session that we're going to look at today is a track that Chris and I created all from scratch. This is a piece that you'll see we've put one kind of drums on it, but I'll show you pieces that we could chop up and use in different vibes and, you know, different ways that we make things sound old or filtered or cool. It's a lot more creative stuff as opposed to subtle mix things. So we're gonna play some of the track now and take a look at some of the plugins that we used. This is Chris Warren. He played a lot of the instruments on this song, co-produced it. So what we started out with was a little Mellotron loop that we programmed, so I can play you that just soloed. Then on each of the individual tracks, we put a guitar amp. So you can hear that's not doing anything super extreme. It's just adding a little bit of gain and uh, dirt to it, but we're not doing anything drastic. It's not screaming, raging distortion or anything like that. So now we'll group those together. And on the group, first is the Abbey Road vinyl. Then we have a filter. And then after that, a reverb. So I will play a little bit of the track dry, and then we'll drop in the plugins and you'll see the difference. So there, obviously, we're adding a bunch of wow and flutter with the vinyl cutting. And we have it on the you know DJ turntables. We're just trying to lower the resolution a little bit, keep it a little lo-fi, lacquer, uh, everything that's cutting the bandwidth a little bit. Then even further with the one knob, we're going to take that even to an extreme. And then we can automate the one knob to, uh, to make some movement throughout the track. And then just a little reverb at the end uh, to create some space. So that's basically the foundation for the song, and then we just started layering things on top of it. So then after that, we laid some chords on top of that. We used the Electric 88, which is Waves Rhodes plugin. Here we used a lot of the built-in effects on the plugin, including like an extreme amount of chorus, which is sort of giving us a little more of that warped, final, messed up tape kind of feel that we really want with this. So then we took that Rhodes and we doubled it with the, the grand piano here, the grand Rhapsody, which we then put a little EQ and uh, board gain from the TG12345 onto to just to dirty it up. Again, we don't want anything sounding too pristine or clean. We want to have some saturation, some color, some character to everything. And you sort of, with this kind of thing, you can never have too much. The last thing we want is thing to sound like stock, clean, modern patches. So here's the piano that doubles that Rhodes part. So I'll play you the little chorus tag kind of uh, area that we have here where we're gonna bring in a guitar uh, melody that's doubled by another piano. So first we can just go through the piano. And you can see we're using the electric grand here, Sephira, and again, the Abbey Road vinyl. So we'll play that just the keyboard by itself without any of our processing added, and then we can start to add back some of the processing. Then again, we're adding Sephira, a little color. and the Abbey Road vinyl. Yeah. 
which is just lo-fying it a step further and adding a little additional warble, which again is a lot you know, more exaggerated than you would often hear, but in this case for this track, it's, get, it's adding a cool texture that uh, kind of works. Same with the guitar, we're using a PRS amp. I'll play with the original sound, just dry from a DI sounds like. So we add the PRS. Instantly way vibey or cool, has a little bit of fuzz sound going on. We'll add some tremolo. And lastly, some H reverb. Which is set on the longish side, it's just over three seconds, but we don't have a ton of it in the mix. So this is a little textural track that we made, again, using the Electric 88. Uh, I'll play you the whole thing and then we can dissect some of the pieces. This is what it sounds like by itself. So that's something that I just played in with a MIDI keyboard and then probably at about a quarter of that speed and then just edited and quantized and chopped into that. So if you listen dry, what that starts out as is this. And then add the delay. So you can see it's just a 16th note delay, pretty good amount of feedback. Where it is is we're in analog mode four, which is adding a nice bit of dirt to it. We're in lo-fi mode, which is adding more dirt. And then there's just a tiny, tiny hair of depth in the modulation. So it's just moving the pitch just a hair. And then after that, we are gonna add a compressor because we don't really want the decays to decay. We want them to sort of get smashed into each other and just create kind of this evolving wall of sound that never really goes away. That's gonna be in the H delay, the H comp, and let's take a listen. So now let's listen to that in context. We'll start with these two bypass, and then we'll kind of add them in and you can get the idea of what this is gonna sound like. So then we'll add back the delay and the compressor. So here's the last track of guitars. I'm gonna play it for you as it is with all the effects first, and then we'll go back and sort of dissect how we did it. Let's play it dry. Which is not particularly cool sounding at all. We'll add the delay. So that's in ping pong mode. So we're just getting some left and right, back and forth some space. Again, a little bit of modulation, lo-fi mode, analog mode, kind of uh, in keeping with the whole texture of the song. Then as with the last track, we're adding a compressor after that. It's not doing anything super drastic. It's just kind of creating more of a wash than individual uh, discernible echoes. And after that, another instance of the Abbey Road vinyl. This one we're using a lot less than in some of the other cases, more of just as a tone control as opposed to using all the wow and flutter and noise and stuff like that. So here's with all the treatment. And here's how it sounds in the context of the track. So now we can go through some of the synths that we used in the track. Most of them are just little subtle flavors and textures as opposed to any kind of major melody or chordal part. So this next little uh, synth piece I'll play you is a, is a codex and it has the J37 tape machine after it. So I'll just solo that and you can hear the piece by itself. Dry. And let's listen in context of the song.
It's obviously not a complicated part. The patch isn't particularly complicated either. We're using the J37 afterwards to add some delay, some feedback to the delay. Uh, you can see we changed the tape speed. Normally it's at 15, it's seven and a half ips here, which what it's gonna do is it's gonna thicken up the low end a little bit and it's going to cut off a little more of the high end. So again, just basically acting as a tone control, just a little more interesting and cool sounding than using a traditional EQ, but we're not using any of the wow or flutter features or anything like that, like we are on a lot of the other tape machines in this session. So it's subtle, but it's a cool thing that you can do, especially drums and bass, slowing down the tape speed can really uh, help to thicken up your low end. So the next element that we added is just another little highlight thing. Uh, it almost has like a dub kind of feel to it. And this is actually a, a real toy piano that we recorded and then added a bunch of effects to. I'll play you the raw sound. So first we added the Shep's channel. I'll show you here. So we're adding a bunch of mid-range, filtering off a bunch of top, a uh, little compression. After the Shep's channel, we're gonna add the Sephira to just add a little more coloration and a subtle distortion to it. So check that out. So that's with, then without. Again, not super drastic. We're just using subtle colors. We're not really trying to smash or destroy or completely decimate the sound. It's fairly subtle. So then at the end of that, we've got the Shep's channel, we've got Sephira, and then we're gonna add a dub style delay using the H delay. So let's check that out. So you see the H delay, we've got it pretty wet. Um, it's in analog mode. High pass and low pass are both engaged. Lo-fi is engaged. And we've got just a hair of depth going on the modulation. And really, you really only need one or two clicks on this and, it, and it'll do what you need. Any further and you're getting to very extreme sonic decimation, I guess you would call it. Cool, so now we can look at some of the stuff that we have going on the master bus of this session. First, there's a one knob filter. Then we have the J37 tape machine, and then again, another instance, the last instance of Abbey Road Vinyl. The one knob really isn't doing anything except at the beginning and the end of the song, so I'll just kind of play it a second of that so you, so you can hear what I'm talking about. So you can hear we're just filtering in the beginning of the song. One thing that's interesting to note is the position of the filter versus the vinyl plugin. Because if we had this filter at the end of the chain, we would be filtering out all of that cool record noise and stuff that we've added. So this way we put it in front of it. So even when the filter is closed at the very beginning, it still sounds like it's coming off of a record. You can see the tape machine here. Again, not doing anything drastic. Seven and a half ips, thickening up the sound a little bit, dulling out the top end. Nothing extreme there. The Abbey Road, again, nothing extreme. This is the only Abbey Road where we're actually adding some, what you would call vinyl noise though. The rest of them we're just using for the wow and flutter and the filtering. This one we're actually adding quote unquote vinyl noise and some crackle and uh, ambient junk in there to make the entire piece sound like it's coming off of a record. But it does provide a glue to the whole track, which gives it that sort of vintage vibe that's kind of the whole purpose of this experiment. So even though this isn't, we're not leading heavily into this plugin, it is pretty important. And now let's turn that Abbey Road off. back on. Thanks for checking out my studio. I hope you found that interesting and useful. Uh, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below or subscribe to the Waves YouTube channel and uh, we'll try to answer them for you. Thanks. Thanks.